Hello everybody, welcome back to the Right Turn Randy channel. Yes, it's true, we are supercharging the Tide Car. So in this video, I'm gonna be going through all the parts I got to sort of put all this together and the general plan for getting it all working. Now first off, we got the blower itself. This is a Wyand 671. The blower is freaking heavy. It's so heavy. <clears throat> Looks like it runs pretty smooth, but the thing is like massive. And it's pretty hard to turn too. Two lobe straight rotors and it's gonna be getting dual carburetors. They, they also sell plates like this that have just a single carburetor on there. And of course you can do it with a fuel injection hat coming off the top of it also. But I opted for two carburetors. The whole kit came with all of the hardware you need to install it. Two pulleys, I have a 34 tooth pulley right here and a 38 tooth pulley. And that's good for something like, I think 14% underdrive or overdrive, depending on which pulley you have on top and bottom. It also came with the idler assembly and mounting bracket, locating pilot, the intake manifold, which is just machine cast aluminum. And the manifold has two ports back there for vacuum references. And this is where the uh, blow off assembly goes. And that's a couple springs with this little plate right here. And that is like a pop-off valve. When you end up getting overboosted in the manifold, it'll release the pressure there if you have a backfire or something like that. So instead of the supercharger going and taking off, <laughs> it'll release the pressure, at least hopefully. The port looks pretty small, but a backfire. I don't know if it'd be able to release enough pressure through that, but I mean, people have been doing this kind of stuff forever. Like, what am I talking about? I have no idea really. It also came with a dual pulley which is gonna be perfect because I might put power steering back on it. So I'd like to have the extra pulley just to have the ability to do that. I'm going to definitely need a pulley for the alternator. The alternator is getting relocated, so I'm gonna to have to figure out what size belt I'm gonna use for that. But I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that when I get to that video. And then of course we've got the belt and the gaskets that are underneath this intake manifold right here. So for the fuel system, I've got obviously the block off plate because I'm not gonna be using a mechanical pump anymore. I have a 3 8 filter. This is a tap so that I can connect the fuel pressure gauge. And the fuel pressure gauge is actually coming from the NASCAR. So I'll be hooking up the NASCAR fuel pressure gauge once everything goes back together and I'll have the fuel pressure right there on the dash. The whole system is going to be fed by this Carter rotary vane fuel pump. It's a 50 gallon per hour unit and it uses 3 8 inch fittings. So I'm gonna have this thing pulling the fuel from the tank, which is all gonna be 3 8 all the way up into the engine bay. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna mount the fuel pump in the engine bay or near the tank. I think I'm probably gonna put it near the tank. I've got line coming to do the entire fuel system. That rotary vane pump came with all these, all this hardware and stuff. And then I have some nylon line to be able to hook up that NASCAR auto meter fuel gauge. Now that's gonna do it for the fuel system. Should be pretty easy. I'm still gonna need some fittings to be able to build the split because it's gonna have to split off to feed both carburetors. I've got this Edelbrock ABS-2. This is a 650 CFM Edelbrock ABS carburetor which has annular boosters in the primaries. That is going to be probably the rear carburetor it's only 50 CFM more than the Edelbrock Performa that's on there now, which is a 1406, I believe, with a manual choke. This one also has a manual choke, so I'll be able to hopefully tie the both of them together and run them in the car. I don't know if you need to use the choke with a supercharged engine. I have absolutely no clue. But this ABS-2 is gonna be the second carburetor. And it was an open box item. I saved a little bit of money on it. Then air delivery, I've got this Hillborn Scoop which is pretty cool. I bought it off Amazon and it was uh, pretty cost effective. It looks like it's put together pretty well too. And then that comes with all of the mounting hardware and filters and everything. Then I have a boost gauge and I also got an ATI super damper. It's going to be going on a cast stock crank. It is cut for two keyways, but I'm only gonna be using one obviously on this engine. I'm hoping that I can underdrive the blower enough that it won't snap the snout of the crank right off. I don't wanna really go through and rebuild the entire engine just for the simple fact that I've never done anything like this before. So I'd much rather blow up a GM crate motor than a fully built blower ready motor. 
uh, from some stupid mistake like a tuning mistake or a jetting mistake or you know fuel system mistake I'd rather put this giant blower on a Chevy crate motor and see what it does see how long we can make it last I don't have high hopes really um, if I severely underdrive the blower I'll probably get, get it to last for a bit but with cast pistons cast steel crank and factory rods I don't know uh, what the quality of, of all the internals and everything is but I guess that's the fun of doing this we'll we'll see won't we and last but not least we have the MSD Pro Billet distributor because you can see where this distributor comes up right here with it sitting right over that and the blower back of the blower being right here with an HEI distributor the cap is much bigger and with the blower right here the cap uh, won't fit there so I had to get another distributor and I figured I would go with the Pro Billet because in the car right here down in the footwell you can see there are two MSD ignition boxes those are MSD 6Ts, which are MSD 6 boxes with all of the vibration proofing put in them for NASCAR. I'm hoping that at least one of those boxes works. It should be able to very easily wire right into the MSD billet distributor. And hopefully that ignition system, I'm sure it's going to be plenty to handle the supercharger. And that should be everything I need to put this whole system together, aside from a couple switches and a few fittings. I think the biggest issue is gonna be that this blower right here supposedly moves 426 cubic inches of air per revolution. That's a 350. So if this thing's moving 426 cubic inches, that's a lot. It, with the pulley system, with the big pulley on top and the small pulley on the bottom, I think you can get it to 15% underdrive. If it's a 15% underdrive, there's calculators out there that say that that's supposed to be somewhere in the neighborhood of eight pounds of boost, nine pounds of boost, or something like that. I don't know if that's gonna to be too much on 93. This blower is gonna be on the bleeding edge of what that stock block and rotating assembly can take. I am seriously debating whether I should pull the engine out and regap the rings just to make sure that excessive heat in the piston doesn't butt those ring ends together and blow the top off of one of the pistons. I'm seriously considering doing that. But then again, maybe I'll just put the thing on and see what happens. I haven't decided yet. So that is everything going into the Tide car for the supercharger build. The next video, I'm going to be installing this carburetor, installing the distributor, and putting the fuel system together. So I want to make sure that I can put all those things in the car and have them all in working order so that when the blower goes on, I don't have to worry about is there something wrong with the carburetor? Did I do something wrong with the ignition system? Is there something going on with the fuel system? I'll know all of that stuff is already working. Oh, and just as an aside, I'm pretty sure that at some point that engine is gonna end up coming out of that car. And so as a preemptive measure, I went and bought a shop crane so that when it needs to get pulled out, it can get pulled out. And also an engine stand so that I can put the pistons, rods, and the crank back in it when they all get scattered all over the pavement. Hopefully that doesn't happen. I really don't want it to happen. I'd rather this engine lived a good long time, but looking at the size of this blower, I, I don't really know how long it's gonna last, but I think it's gonna be fun to find out together. But that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am super excited about this build. It's gonna be so awesome and I can't wait to get started. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the videos, please subscribe and I will see you next time.